So I think this is going to be a huge part in Joel's life. The ability to, like I said, bring his kids around his, his ranch, check cattle day to day, and uh, even let his kids drive it back and forth to school. Um, you know, growing up, I, I jumped in the Jeep and, and another truck my dad had and the same thing is it, you know, I have memories in that, core memories. And the fact that he's gonna be able to share those with his kids and we're able to gift him that, that's what I think make the most impact with Joel. Unfortunately, Joel has really been dealt a rough hand. He's dealt with financial issues, with divorce, with custody battles. Um, he's been hit with every hardship you can imagine. You know, he's a rancher, he loves his cattle, and times have been tough with that as well. You know, he's just, he's not getting a break. He's catching it from all sides. And I, I feel terrible for the guy because he has a heart of gold. Um, I really, I got to get to know him and spend some time down in Mountain Park with him, learning about what he does, his hobbies, his career, and kind of his trajectory in life. And it's just one of those classic cases of this man has done everything right. And he, he should have a, a kingdom of gold waiting for him, but he doesn't. Um, he's just had horrible luck. And so if there's one thing, if we, if we can't get him out to our events, you know, he has lots of responsibilities with his cattle he's a mountain park so it's i want to say about two hours away correct me if i'm wrong but it's just not feasible for him to go on camping trips or come up to the city all the time it's it's really difficult for him to connect with people outside of his local area and he works a ton so that's of no fault of his own he's not self-isolating he's just bound by his responsibilities and sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that so the one way that we saw we can reach out is he has this really old Jeep that has a lot of sentimental value to him. He shared a lot of memories with his kids who are his whole world. And uh, it was an asset to one of the things that he loves the most and that's uh, cattle ranching. You know, he would use it to go check on his cattle and check on his fences. And after it threw a rod, he, he thought, okay, you know, easy enough, I'll go put a motor in it and then back to business as usual. But he's been burned by people who've made false promises left and right. And now not only is he left with a Jeep that doesn't run, but it doesn't have a transmission or anything in it now. So he's actually worse off than when he started. And we saw this as an opportunity, like, no, this isn't our mission. This isn't what we do. You know, we're, we're not some kind of an automotive shop where it's like, oh, if you're a veteran, you know, we'll swap your engine and fix your problems. That's not what we do. But Joel is a great guy who's been really befallen with all kinds of awful things that I wouldn't wish on anybody. And this is our one way to reach him, to take one thing off of his plate and to help him continue holding on to faith in humanity, essentially, you know. Um, hopefully he can take this back in good condition with maybe a couple upgrades and continue to make memories with his kids and continue to use that as an asset uh, with his cattle ranching and kind of just brighten up his world a little bit. If that's one thing that we can do um, I feel like that would have a pretty big impact in his life. I can't fix all the things in Joe's life, but I do believe and I know that our, the dark place in us, the negativity in us is accumulative. It grows over time. You keep getting kicked down and it's another notch on the belt of accumulation that's pushing you to a place that you never wanted to be. I wish I had the tools to fix more of those problems. But man, if I can take one more broken thing in his life and make it good, make it not a broken thing in his life, then I, you know, I, I believe I'm doing what the Lord designed me to do. Use my tools to better, to, to help these guys out. That's all I think about. So yeah, I think that when he looks out and sees the accumulation of broken things in his life, I can take one of those off his off his chart and make it, turn it in from right now, it's a negative thing in his life. But once we're done with it, it becomes a positive thing in his life from now on. Without me being there, he's gonna have this continue to be a positive and inspiration in his life his son's going to be able to drive it you know he's going to continue to make positive memories with it and he can look back on all the veteran hands that took part in 
you know, fixing a problem for him. You know, he's not mechanically inclined, and, and the state that this Jeep is in now is not his fault. You know, somebody did him wrong, and we get the opportunity to undo that. And I think that's pretty cool. At first, I wasn't really in, into it. I thought we were going to be doing like a pimp my ride kind of build and to try to get exposure but while also helping a guy. And I was like, man, I, you know, I don't know what makes this guy so special. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't too sure, but um, I wasn't able to go down and talk to him and meet with him in person. And then after talking to everybody else, you know, th then it made sense. Um, he's been burned by multiple places that were supposed to work on it, and. Uh, He's got a ranch, he has a use for it. He doesn't want a big crazy build, he just wants it running. And there's some family history behind it and he doesn't have the ability, uh, like he might have the knowledge and, and know-how, but maybe from what I'm saying, like, I mean, he's working all the time. He's working on working with cattle and run, trying to keep his ranch running and spend time with his kids. So he, he needs that hand and uh, once I kind of got my head wrapped around the story, I'm, I'm on board now and um, just want to get this thing to where he can drive his kids around the ranch, check on the cattle, check on the fence, maybe drive it into town and just have kind of a reliable little farm Jeep and uh, with some couple, you know, slight modern conveniences like a roll cage and better tires pretty much and uh, give him that, that thing that he wants and has wanted but has been unable to get and uh, with a little bit of help you know we can we can give him that show him that there's some light at the end of the tunnel and maybe be able to get him out uh, even off-road with us outside the ranch so joel is also a veteran and whereas it he plays a little bit into the mission a big part of the mission is finding that new sense of purpose and being able to provide that hobby and more adventures to veterans and first responders that don't have that outlet yet this jeep provides Joel the ability to utilize it around his ranch, make memories with his kids, and still even then possibly come out and enjoy some adventures with us, providing him that outlet and the, the recreational outdoor therapy that Recoil Outdoor stands for. So there's a huge, huge mark there with, uh, with Joel's Jeep. It's not just another build. It is a, a build that brings a sense of purpose to somebody else's lives and makes the most for them. Ranching's a struggle. Um, even in the best of times, you know, um, you've always got death loss, you know, you've got winter, you've got droughts. Um, and unfortunately, you know, when you have things happen to you, towards the end of my career, um, you know, some people are lucky, they're able to leave the Army on their own terms. Unfortunately for me, even being a combat veteran, um, I ended up getting passed over for promotion and for an officer in the Army, it's an up or out system. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. And, uh, you know, it put a, you know, I was dealing with a lot of PTSD um, already. Um, I, I, had a, I had a good childhood, but there was also a lot of conflict on the farm. Uh, it was a family operation between my dad and his brother and brother-in-law. There's a lot of, I grew up with a lot of uh, verbal and physical abuse between the three of them. Um, and, uh, you know, fast forward through a 20 year army career that didn't end on the best note um, with a marriage that was kind of failing. Um, you know, when the Jeep kind of died, you know, I kind of took it as a symbol of, you know, some things, you know, going by the wayside. And, uh, you know, I retired in 2017, uh, divorced in uh, 2019, um, tried to hook on with the oil field when I retired, um, just because, you know, I was wanting to grow my ranch so bad. Um, I had the opportunity to add some more land potentially. But, you know, it's one of those things you can only borrow so much money. You've got to bring money in too. So uh, tied in with the oil field was, you know, working 60 hour, 60 hour weeks, two weeks on, one week off, coming back home. And, you know, between, you know, my PTSD um, and, you know, just 
the heart, you know, the heart, you know, and any, any small business owner will tell you, I mean, when you depend on yourself and your business to put food on the table, you know, if you've got a bad month, you know, it's just, doesn't take very many of those before you really feel behind the eight ball. And, you know, I've always prided myself on being a breadwinner, on working hard. And, but sometimes all the hard work in the world just doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to make it happen. So, um, about the same time the Jeep was down, you know, I was really down. Um, I've kind of hung on by the skin of my teeth. Um, there's been, there's been good days. I mean, there's a lot of good things about raising animals, but I mean, it's, it's a very expensive thing also. I mean, talk to anybody who has horses, they'll tell you it's, it's a really expensive habit, you know, and you know, I've always said, you know, some people have gambling addictions, some people have drinking addictions, I have a cattle addiction. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, so far I've been lucky, I've been able to kind of uh, make ends meet, but really doesn't leave much money behind. I mean, if, if something breaks down, if I can't fix it, you know, it's kind of like that Jeep. I just don't have the time and I don't have the money to, to fix it up myself. And no matter how hard you want, sometimes you can't wish things. You just have to, kind of take a deep breath and kind of reevaluate. And uh, um, I've had to sell some cows that I really didn't want to sell. Uh, kind of broke my heart, but you just got to kind of fight for another day. And, you know, there'll be bad days, but then you just you got to realize that every day you're on this side of heaven is a day that you got to try to make the most out of. I was cruising through Craigslist and here, 1960 Willie's Jeep. So I click on it and he was a he was a senior airman and he had uh, was they were getting ready to move they had a really nice house but they only had a two-stall garage and his wife had to have half the garage well unfortunately he had two projects he had a pontiac fiero which also dates me and he had this willie's jeep well he had way too much money in the fiero so he put the jeep on and he just asked a thousand bucks for it and i mean it was original it, I mean, it was just the old four, inline four, manual transmission, you know, four wheel drive, kind of orange, faded orange. Uh, he really didn't know much about it, so the history kind of starts with him. But I mean, you know, I was a young captain. I, had, I was like, man, I can scrape up a thousand bucks. Went down there, looked it, drove it around the block, bought it. So I brought it back here. Um, my wife at the time wasn't excited about it, but it was a little more substantial than a four-wheeler, and uh, it was a heck of a lot cheaper than buying, buying a side-by-side, -side. so begrudgingly, she let me use it. And what I did was, is I just bought another uh, car seat for my daughter, and I used rubber straps and, and ratchet straps, and I, I got it solid on the car. I bought her a little uh, uh, World War I aviator helmet with the goggles, I wish I had a picture of that, but I don't. But, and you know, we just, we go check cows. With the farm so close to each other, it wasn't like I needed a $50,000 feed truck to go 15 miles to check cows. So, and you know, she was, she was about four then. So, you know, she didn't need her feet down in the floorboard. So I put the fencing material and the uh, chainsaw at her feet and, we just go and we just, I'd put it in first, four low, put it in first gear, and we just put around the farm. You know, I live near a highway, so I'm always kind of conscious about the fence, especially with young calves trying to get out. So, you know, I, after slaving away at Fort Sill all day, um, you know, we just spend the weekend uh, prowling around on the Jeep, put a cattle siren on it, and uh, she went to school about 15 miles from here. So on Fridays, I would try to get off early from Fort Sill and uh, I'd putter that old Jeep 15 miles and I'd get in line to pick up the kids. And when I was the next one, I'd flip on the cattle siren and she just, she was, I mean, she was in first grade and I could see the eyes just roll all the way back in her head. But, and then I would get her in and while the teachers were watching, I'd put her little World War One leather helmet on. And I mean, it's, I mean, she was, you know, she was seven going on 17 and she would just ball me out, but you know, and then it just, it'd be a nice, uh, peaceful 15, you know, we were out in the country. So we just take a back road and 
just putter along and went home and just had a lot of good memories of it. But unfortunately, um, when she was in third grade, um, I puttered to go get her and we were coming down Highway 54. And unfortunately, you know, highway speed limits in rural Oklahoma are 65. And by then she was getting worn down to the point where about 40 was all you really wanted to do with her, you know, with the steering, which was non-power steering. And uh, we were always worried about someone coming up behind us. And uh, we were on a stretch that I kind of got into her a little too much. And luckily it was just coming up on the entrance, but we threw a rod and, you know, that there was she was. And, uh, you know, it's just hard finding people willing to work on stuff that old nowadays. I mean, you know, there's, you know, there, the shade tree mechanics of, you know, my youth have kind of gone away. We live in a really uh, desolate part of Oklahoma, but I did find this one guy and he swore to me that he'd get it back to, a, you know, back to running shape. And so I hauled it 40 miles to him and a couple months pass by, I go on a deployment, I come back, the guy's in jail and the Jeep is gone. Um, I was able to locate the Jeep, but the engine was gone. So um, I pulled it, you know, I got the Jeep, showed him I had ownership of it, uh, got it home, parked it under the barn, and it's kind of there, it's kind of sat there for the last seven years. Found another shade tree mechanic, and uh, I tried to talk him into fixing it up, but, you know, it's just one of those things, it's such a special project. I mean, it's not like you can go to Napa and say, hey, I got a 1960 Willys Jeep. I mean, it's just not parts. So um, Corey just got sick and tired of me. So, but he heard, a, he heard about a group of uh, veterans that live uh, closer to Oklahoma City. I'm about two hours away. And he's like, oh, they might be interested. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm way too private. You know, it's like, just fix my Jeep, please. He's like, no, no. So finally, after dodging about a couple months. Um, I told him I was going to take it back and then uh, Corey uh, Cooperoff threatened me and said you're going to come and you're going to meet these people. And I said okay. So went out. We had uh, a really great cookout um, at his shop um, with a great group of veterans that uh, do all kinds of uh, stuff, you know, lake stuff, rock crawling with jeeps, things of that nature. And I kind of had it in my mind going into it. I'm like, look, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have a good time, and I'm just gonna give him the Jeep. I mean, it was just one of those things like, you know, I, you know, so much time had passed, you know, I'm divorced now, my kids aren't here. Um, so it was kind of a struggle, it was a great memory, it was kind of a sad reminder. But, you know, after a night of fellowship with fellow veterans, um, I won't say I got strong-armed, but, I got talked into, you know, giving them the Jeep and letting them see what they could do with it. And uh, right now they're hammering away on it and uh, looking forward to seeing what's done when they get it all done.